Welcome back to another tutorial. I wanted to follow up my locker state tutorial with how to do locker rotations. <coughs> you should go check out my other locker tutorial if you haven't already, by the way. But anyways, let's get straight into it. So, you may be wondering what locker rotations are. Locker rotations are basically where two or multiple survivors hop in and out of lockers in order to either reset bloodlust or for the killer to chase a different survivor so that way they can reset the chase entirely. This strategy pretty much makes you invincible as long as you don't mess up your locker saves or make positional mistakes. And the best part about this, you can play like this without voice communication. You just need to understand the concept of it. So how does it work? Well, it's fairly simple. You just sit inside of a locker until the killer passes by a certain point. Once the killer is a safe distance away, you hop out for your teammate to hop in. This gives you distance on the killer basically resetting your chase. If the killer decides to chase you after you hop out of the locker, you just run the tile in the way where you don't give the killer a 50-50. Here, I'll give you an example of an LT wall. Ideally, you want to run an LT wall in a clockwise fashion. Running it clockwise will give you guaranteed safe vaults. However, smart killers will try to zone you to the outer walls by cutting through the inside of the LTs. Forcing you to the outside of an LT gives the killer a 50-50, or a 50% chance of mind gaming you on the vault. By using locker rotations, you can avoid taking those 50-50s entirely. By rotating in and out of the lockers, you can save your teammates while resetting your chase. Resetting your chase allows you to dictate how you will allow yourself to be zoned and give your team more time to do generators. With each generic tile, there are different places you need to hold and different spots you need to look in order to know when it's safe to hop out of the locker. I'm going to start with the killer shack and work my way through the most common tiles. For the killer shack, when you're inside of the locker, you need to wait until the killer passes by either the front or the back window. These are the safe positions that you can hold for getting locker saves while the other person is being chased. For LT walls, when you're in the locker, you must wait for the killer to be on the edge of the T wall on either side. Or you can wait for them to round the corner of the L wall. Here are the safe positions you can play while your teammate is rotating into the locker. For pallet gyms, you want to play between the short side of the pallet and the long wall. Playing by the short side of the pallet is very unsafe. Playing the long wall lets you read the killer easier and makes for a safer locker rotation. Don't hop out of the locker until the killer is at least inside or past the pallet. Jungle gyms are a little different. Jungle gym lockers vary from map to map. Some spawn only one locker, some two. You have to learn the spawns of each map and come up with your own locker rotations. But here are some examples from the Macmillan jungle gyms. I, I just got back. I put a pizza in the <laughs> oven. 
Yay, farming. Oh, this kid's getting macroed the whole game. 